Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, Penrite Oil, Hair and Forbes Machinery House and Pace Farm Eggs. Hello and welcome to a different episode of Classic Restos. But before I go any further, these people have the jug on, the biscuits are out, and they want to see you. It's thanks to Shannon's. Ask about multi-policy discounts and sign up for the Shannon's Club. Call 134646 for a quote and see more at shannons.com.au. For oils, coolants, additives and technical assistance, oil right, use Penrite. And Heron Forbes has the range. Buy online at machineryhouse.com.au. Now, this TV episode holds a variety, like a treasure chest showcasing automotive history. Welcome to Motoring Through the Decades. Here we go, something different. This is the Ballarat Exhibition Centre, based in Ballarat, Victoria. Now, this headquarters for a variance of events hosts a floor area of in excess of 5,000 square metres, with 2,500 square metres of concrete area at the front of the building, as well as 2,000 square metres of lawn area thrown in to keep someone employed with a victor. And I guess a place like this is not complete without 300 car park spaces adjacent to the building. This event is a three-day over Easter display and is put on by the Vintage and Classic Car Club Ballarat holding around 550 members. It's an all-makes club catering for vehicles from the very beginning up to 25 years of young. Motoring through the decades features around 120 cars and some 20 motorbikes. The oldest car will be a replica 1886 Benz through to a 1907 Holzman motor buggy and between 10 and 15 vehicles from every decade right up to a GT Falcon. In addition to the 120 cars inside the display, there will be a rotating display of 40 to 50 vehicles on the forecourt of the complex each day by the club members. Yeah, it's a pretty cushy gig, this. Uh, mostly inside, away from the elements, undercover. Time now to go and have a look-see. You love it, don't you? Really? Silent treatment? So early in the day? <laughs> Jeez. With me now we have Daryl, life member of the Ballarat Classic Car Club. How are you, Daryl? I'm good, thanks, Fletch. And yourself? Good, mate. Good. Thanks for the invite. Fantastic. Welcome to Ballarat. Hope you're really enjoying the show. Thanks, mate. Love it. This is sensational in here. Uh, Fletch, we've gone put a, probably 120 of the best cars we could find. They're all local cars. Uh, our club's got 550 members or thereabouts, and we've just got some fantastic cars amongst them. Good on you, mate. Well done. Now, before we go any further, now you guys did a car cruise a long time ago. Yeah, we've uh, we did a car show back in about 1993 to uh, raise some money for the Royal Children's Hospital cancer unit down there and that was a pretty good one we've had a few smaller ones since but this is our 50th anniversary of the club and we thought we'd try and put a big one together to make it something special for people this time and you had a car cruise in 1966 i believe 66 was the first year of the club fletch i was too young to be involved then but uh we've still got a lot of those founding members are around the club and we've even got a couple of those cars that were on the original run are here today on in the show congratulations because i think in the history of uh classic restos that is the oldest club 50 years that, that's amazing Thanks, Fletcher. Yeah, we were, I think, the first club in Victoria outside of the Melbourne metro area, uh, swinging on the, the coattails of the Vintage Drivers Club at the time, and decided to, to go on our own here in Ballarat in '66. Yeah. Good on you, Daryl. Now, uh, to start today's show, something interesting here a replica car, an 1886 car. What can you tell us about this? Fletch, uh, this has been built by a gentleman over in Avoca, which is only about 60 k's away. Uh, he decided that he wanted something a bit different, so he's built a replica of an 1886 Benz, which was the world's first car built with an internal combustion engine that anybody knows of. Uh, the car that Bertha Benz loaded the kids in and drove 65 miles across Germany to go and visit the mother-in-law or something back in 1886. Also the first obvious trip that a lady did in a motor car, because it was the first motor car, so it had to be. Uh, how do you do a replica... 
of a car without its original parts. I mean, this guy, talk about a fantastic machinist. What a very clever man to have built this. Did it all in his workshop at home. He got the plans, I believe, uh, sent out from Germany and uh, sat down in his, in his machine shop at home and built, built the replica. We've also got a genuine 1907 Holzman motor buggy out of America, yep. uh, a two-cylinder, two-speed transmission, 12 horsepower. They had a rope belt drive. If you have a look at the thing, it looks just like the horse and cart minus the horse. I don't know how you could have driven it. This thing has survived for 116, 117 years. It's been in the one family for all of that time. Belongs to a family from over Mount Gambia way, but it's stored here by one of our members in Ballarat and he's had it for a number of years. I, I don't know whether he's a relative or how it fits in, but we've had this at a previous car show back in about 1992, 93, and it's just amazing the standard of that it's survived in over those years. OK, Daryl, into the 1910s section. This is where it gets interesting. I mean, we've gone from motorised horse buggies, we've got windscreens now, we've got steering wheels. Steering wheels, brass headlights, lots of brass work on them. We've got a bonnet. Uh, we've... Here we've got a, an array of cars from the 1910s. There's a couple of French cars here to start with. One with two cylinders, one with a sing, single cylinder, and it's almost a thousand cc single cylinder, the, the large behind me. Uh, then there's a couple of Austins from the UK beside there. Moving through into the roaring 20s now, Daryl. Fletch, we've got a great selection of 20s cars here. Everything from a 1923 Rolls Royce, 1926 Chrysler, there's two more Fords, there's Morris Cowleys, all those old household names from the 20s and 30s. Um, a model Ford's a bit further along the line. But uh, yeah, a really good mix of cars from that era. On that note, Darrell, did you hear that Joyce Main died? No, Fletch, I didn't. Yeah, Kelvinator. <laughs> oh, right, good one, Fletch. Yeah, yeah, that's terrible. We're starting to get into the style department now. These cars acquiring wire spoke wheels. We're starting to see cars with front bumper bars on them. I mean, it's a very interesting time as we move on through. Yes, yeah. Fletch, it is interesting. We've got some with still the irons hanging at the front. Uh, the Chrys Chrysler behind me, he's got the chrome bumper, and it's probably one of the first of the chrome bumpered cars, uh, but it's still on, on wooden spoke wheels, whereas beside us we've got uh, no bumpers, but we're onto wire spokes. So it was just depending on, on the different countries, I think, and the transition in the uh, evolution of the manufacturers. I mean, the 1920s, Daryl, I mean, what a time. I mean, it was a hard time. I mean, uh, the roaring 20s uh, in the United States of America, life was really starting to speed up, and motor cars certainly depicted that. Certainly did uh, fletch the, the cars developed, uh, they, they continue to evolve from what we were looking at over there in the 1910 cars and uh, they became more affordable to people. It wasn't just the, the, the very affluent people that had them. Mm. Henry Ford had got the production line up and running and the T models were, you know, they were the working man's yep. car yep. and uh, the other manufacturers were following suit as well. The cars were getting more drivable, mm. um, more user friendly because we had more experience with yep. them and we, we knew what people could do with them. Exactly, I mean in the United States of America too, the, uh, the crash of the stock market in the late 1920s had a huge impact and I mean on a pro rata for po versus population as well, I mean not a lot of people in the 20s had a motor car, I mean those that did were certainly doing well. Yeah, the early 20s they were starting to get more popular and then the stock market crash, the late 20s, it was only the very wealthy that were, yeah. were having them again. And that was when you opened up your, your Route 66 from one side of yeah. the states to the other. Yeah. People were looking to get from the east coast over to the west to follow yeah. their dreams yeah. and... Uh, you know, life was much better on the West Coast, apparently. You're watching Motoring Through the Decades and you're seeing it first on Classic Restos. Back with more right after this. Every weekend around Australia, motoring enthusiasts get together to share their passion for cars and bikes. It's a passion that brings us together. All sorts of people. All sorts of cars and bikes. From the classics of today to the classics of tomorrow. At Shannon's, we understand enthusiasts. So when it comes to insurance, it's got to be Shannon's. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Call 13 46 46 for a quote. If you need a new piece of equipment for your workshop, you need Hair and Forbes Machinery House. Hair and Forbes Machinery House have showrooms around Australia and New Zealand that will have you browsing for hours. See the largest range of industrial and workshop DIY tools. You will be greeted by friendly, helpful staff and you can buy from anywhere online at machinerynhouse.com.au. Hair and Forbes Machinery House. Find your closest store at machinerynhouse.com.au. 
Penrite, Australian made, family owned and operated. Make premium quality engine and racing oils, warranty approved coolants, automatic transmission and manual gear oils, a complete range of engine and fuel additives, heavy duty and industrial products for every application. Visit penrideoil.com for more information. Penrite, Australian made for Australian conditions since 1926. So Daryl, change of clothes, are you having fun? Oh, Fletch, this is great. There's so many people coming through. We're having a fantastic weekend. The cars are just magnificent. You've worked up a sweat yet to take your jacket off. Oh, mate, Ballarat's like this 365 days a year. I just didn't know I was working him so hard. <laughs> now, we've moved into this opulent line of cars here. Wow. This is the 30s era. And boy, don't things get interesting now. We've got cars that are rounded. They've got some shape. They've got some fantastic elegance. These are sensational vehicles. Wow, in the last 30 years, we've come from the turn of the century to now the 30s. What a time. I reckon the 30s was the most exciting time with the development of the cars. You drive something from the late 20s, you drive something from the early mid 30s, and this they're almost like driving a modern car. They still haven't got power steering, they haven't got power brakes, but they've got wind-up windows, they're a lot more comfortable. Uh, this 34 Ford that we're standing beside, it is actually one of my favourite cars in the show. It's just a magnificent looking car. Uh, Henry Ford's little side valve V8 was just a fantastic engine. I have, I've got to say that because I've got one myself as well. Um, unfortunately, this one's not mine, but uh, just a beautiful car, Fletch. The 1930s was a tough era. We talk about the United States of America. Obviously, a lot of these vehicles, their country of origin. From 1929 to 39, the Depression. And it gets back to the amount of people that had a motor car back in those times. They were hard times. There was a lot of criminals. There was bootlegging. We had our Bonnie and Clydes. We had our Al Capones. This was the era where these people also needed motor cars, and these were the types of cars they had. These were the types of cars they preferred because they were fast, they were quick, they were light, they handled reasonably well. And uh, there's the famous letter from, from Clyde Barrow to Henry Ford telling him what a great car he made and how he would, uh, while his occupation wasn't strictly legal, it was his preferred mode of transport. Yeah, they were the cars that he used to steal the most. They were the ones he'd steal. Yeah, that's, that's it, Fletch. We look down the line, we've got the Austin 7, the big one from 1938. We've got a Studebaker next to that from 1937. Car made in a small country next to the car made in the big country. I mean, what a transition. The contrast there is amazing, Fletch, and the English stuck with their small four-cylinder cars while the Americans went for power. They had that big country to cover. Um, everybody trying to move from the east coast to the, to the west coast, as we touched on earlier, and... Uh, yeah, the, the difference between the cars, the designs of the cars, the English always seemed to be lagging that little bit behind the American stuff. Uh, and the same thing continued, you know, into the 1940s. Again, you compare this 1934 Ford that I'm standing still beside, uh, and you look at the Ford Pilot of 1947, 48, and there wasn't a whole lot of difference between the two of them. Well, the American budgets were huge by comparison. I mean, they went out and designed what they wanted to, and then they carried through and they made it. Now, one thing I'd like to comment on, which you don't hear very often on classic restaurants, is the rear of these vehicles. Now, when we look down the line of these 30s cars, very streamlined and windswept out the back, their, their design started taking on a different image, didn't they? Yes, they did, and uh, as we got later into the 30s, the cars were getting boots. Uh, the mid-30s, most of them still had the spare tyre mounted at the back, and the boot was, or the trunk, as the Americans called it, was in behind the, the seat. You had to fold the seat down, awkward to get into. Yeah. By the time you got up to 36, 38, you had a, a boot lid like we've got now, and you could actually put your luggage in from outside. Moving through the 1940s row, boy, doesn't this depict a time? Fletch, the 40s, the cars were getting bigger. There was more chrome, there was more opulence coming onto them. It was straight after the war, though, so there, was, you know, there wasn't much in the early 40s. It was the late 40s before we started to get some really exciting cars. Just from a, a personal angle, I don't think there's anything that dramatic in the 40s that overtook the 30s. I mean, I think because of the war effort, there weren't that many cars produced. Um, production lines were going to the war effort. Um, I think the 30s really uh, set a precedence with uh, some exuberance and styling in cars. The 40s, well, it, they kind of just carried themselves through that period. I think the only thing with the 40s was that you started to get your headlights built into your mudguards instead of separate headlights, that sort of thing. And then you get something like this, this 48 Mercury convertible, and it's something else. We see this Mercury here, this convertible. I mean, what a stunning car. Now, keep in mind this is 1948. And it was also the time, too, where we got our first Holden here in Australia as well. And we've got one of those just a little bit further down the line, 
fleets. Uh, but this 48 Mercury, as I say, I just it's the old side valve V8 again, which I love, as you can probably tell. Yep. Uh, it's just a magnificent car. Now, I don't want to sound too contradictory to myself, but although there weren't that many cars built in the 1940s due to the war effort compared to other decades, cars didn't get much more opulent than that burgundy red 1948 Mercury. And of course, the Cadillac behind me in 1949 with a whole list of standard features, including power windows. End of the 1950s row now. What a time this depicts. What have we got in the 50s? We've got our diners, we've got our bobby socks, we've got the roller skates, we've got the California poppy, and we've also got our Australian Holden. Fantastic era of Fletch. It's a shame you and I are too young to remember it. Uh, but right here, we've got a fantastic FC Holden wagon. Uh, it's been a state title winner, restored ground up over a three-year period. Unfortunately, uh, it was uh, done by a, a gentleman who was a president of our club who passed away suddenly about 18 months ago. And uh, his wife and family still got the cars, and they've got them here for us this weekend, which is fantastic. Isn't it a beautiful thing that they're preserved? Fantastic. Uh, and, and this car, as I said, state title winner only last month. They took it down to Geelong and it won down there. OK, Darrell, so working our way along through the decades here in this line of the 50s cars, what can we expect to see? OK, in the 50s, we've got pretty much everything from a, a 53 Ford mainline ute. We've got a Land Rover, FJ Holdens, uh, Mercury. We've got the first of the Thunderbirds. We've got a 58 Corvette, an early Corvette. Uh, there's an XK140 Jag there. We've already talked about the FC wagon, and then we've got some of the uh, the popular little 50s runabouts. There's a little Renault 4CV, an Austin A30, and then to top it off, right at the end of the line, we've got the Dart. You know what is amazing about this episode? Every car that you see in here, in the exhibition centre, are members' cars. Yes, we're the only car that we've actually borrowed for the weekend from a non-member is the uh, the 31 Rolls Royce Phantom, and uh, that was a it's a local car, and uh, we've got a few contacts and we're able to pull that one in. But every other car here belongs to one of our club members, and uh, it's just a, a great cross section of motoring right from, as we mentioned before, the uh, replica of the 1886 Benz right through to the, the later classics. If you love your classic Americana and you feel like doing a little bit of travelling, why not? Consider this. There is nothing quite like a Fletch Tour. Carlisle or Ford Nationals, GM Nationals and Chrysler Nationals await you. Coming on the Fletch Tour was, was really great. The people that run the tour are fantastic. Experience Route 66 from Chicago to Vegas or choose the Detroit Tour, attending the Woodward Dream Cruise. If you're going to travel anywhere, you've got to do a Fletch Tour. On Fletch Tour, you looked after every step of the way. See FletchTours.com or contact All Things Travel, Lara. In 1926, Australia's Penrite Oil Company was established. Almost 90 years of research, development and refining under the harsh Australian conditions has made Penrite Oil what it is today. Precision, performance, reliability and protection. Championship winning products. Trust Penrite. If you need a new piece of equipment for your workshop, you need Hair and Forbes Machinery House. From a garage jack through to a lathe, Hair and Forbes has the range. And Hair and Forbes Machinery House are Australian owned, established since 1930. You will be greeted by friendly, helpful staff and you can buy from anywhere online at machinerynehouse.com.au. Hair and Forbes Machinery House. Find your closest store at machinerynehouse.com.au. We've always had a few cars. They're all special. The T-Bird. Oh, that's mine. The Combi for when we want to get away. The XR8. It's going to be a classic. They're all insured with Shannon's. We've also got Shannon's home and contents cover. Which helps protect our automotive collectibles, tools and memorabilia in the home and garage. If you're motoring enthusiasts like us, it's got to be. Shannon's. Shannon's. Insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Call 13 46 46 for a quote. OK, we move into the 60s section now. Now, this is where things started speeding up with cars. Things started to get moving, didn't they? Oh, yes. We got the cars that were easily capable of 100 miles an hour, Fletch, and we, 
Look, we've got some really iconic stuff in here today. We've got everything from an early 60s little MGA coupe, which is just the prettiest little car. We go through, and the styling changed quite a lot over that decade too. Uh, we've got an iconic EH Premier wagon. There's a, one of the first Mustangs, a 65 Mustang convertible over there behind me. Here we're standing between two of Australia's early thoroughbreds. We've got the XT Falcon GT on one side, HK Monaro on the other side. And beside them we've got a Mini Cooper. Like it's just Bathurst battling all over again here, here, in, our, uh, here in our show, Fletch. And of course too, uh, again, uh, belonging to the club members as well. I mean, I just can't get over the variety here. All club members' cars, Fletch, we, we cater for everything over 25 years old, right from that early Holzman right through to uh, cars that are even 1990 cars are now eligible. But, uh, you know, these are, the, these are the really great cars of, of our lifetime, I think, Fletch. We're never going to see cars like these again. Now, these are the cars, if you're around 50 years of age, these are the cars you remember as a kid growing up with. And uh, parents, uncles, members of the family having these types of cars, these are the cars you remember driving along, uh, going past your house. You know, I mean, it, it does take you back, doesn't it? It does, Fletch. You know, chrome bumpers and, and the cars were individual. You could stand out the front, you could pick a Holden from a Falcon, from a Valiant, from a, from a Mercedes, whereas nowadays... You've got to really be have a keen eye to pick them, and I, and I work in the trade, and I still can't pick them. I up. never thought the day would come where you know I'd have a car coming towards me. I don't know what it is. That's right, Fletch, and, and you know this is where these '60s cars are just so good. And the other thing, with of course, was that we got a new model nearly every 12 or 18 months too from our from our major manufacturers at least. Yep. Whereas nowadays, of course, the cost of tooling and development, you, you'll keep a car for seven or eight years before they'll do a model upgrade. Also got an Austin Healy over the back there too. They've got a, uh, not a bad little following as well. Oh, that's a little three-litre Healy too. It's uh, one, of the, one of the big Healys and a beautiful car. The restoration on it is fantastic. The metallic blue and white is a great colour scheme. Just a magnificent little car. You know, I've got a soft spot for the XP two-door as well. I mean, you know, the, the last of that first shape Falcon and you've even got one of those here today. We have Flitch and that's another local club member's car. Very original. Um... A lot of those got messed with, with in the early 70s and things. They got the back guards cut out. They got V8s put in. This is still just a six-cylinder, I think it's column auto, uh, but just a very original, restored, of course, but, uh, but restored to the way it was made in the first place. This lady here's never going to get ahead, but don't worry about it. She's armless. She drinks too much too. She's legless. All right, Darrell, here we go. We've got the 1970s row, and uh, mind me saying it's the fastest row too, by the look of things. Certainly is, Fletch. Uh, it, was the year, it was the era of the muscle cars, and we've got some of the, the best of the muscle cars here this weekend on our show. Start us off from the front there, Darrell. We've got a beautiful uh, VG coupe there. Up the far end, we've got a VG Valiant coupe, 245 Hemi. Uh, that car was a finalist in Beta Birdwood Concourse a couple of times uh, when it was first restored. One of our members restored that from Nut and Bolt. Ground up restoration, a beautiful car. They're a cool shape, aren't they? Beautiful. Absolutely wonderful car, that one. And a really nice example. Then we have a little Fiat 850 coupe, just to show that we do appreciate the Europeans. Mm -hmm. uh, a beautifully restored little Mark 1 Escort 1600 Sport here. Uh, that's only been on the road for less than 12 months. One of our members, again, a ground-up resto. Then we move down to the, the big Pontiac, the 71 Firebird Formula Pontiac. 455, I mean, that's just an awesome, awesome car and a beautiful example of one as well. Then we move into the Aussie icons. We've got the Phase 3 GT in nugget gold. Uh, just, you know, probably the most recognisable and most famous of all the Aussie muscle cars. Then we move to the HQ GTS Monaro. Beautiful car too. Uh, as I've always referred to them, the, um, the Australian Pontiac. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And that one was uh, another full restoration by one of our members. Uh, beside it, we've got the E49 Charger. Also, just restoration on that one, just finished within the last six months or so. There's the XB John Goss Special, and of course, that's my favourite. Uh, but the XB Hardtop was a fantastic shape. I, I just love them. And the last of the uh, muscle cars down there is the Alex SS Tirana Hatch, which, you know, it was Holden's uh, foray into it. It was the small car versus the big car of the Ford, and they did pretty well with them too. They're all good things. Now, is this show happening next year, Daryl? We're working out with how the result comes from this year. Yep. Uh, we might make it every two years. It's a lot of work goes into it to get 120-odd cars, 20-odd bikes, yep. all the mannequins in for three days. Yep. But we'll just wait and see how it washes up. OK, now, Daryl, drop the website again to keep in touch. VCCC, VCCC.org.au. All righty. And, of course, you know, you can... Uh 
Yeah, you search online, you can find these guys and keep in touch and see what's happening for 2017. Daryl, it's been absolutely wonderful having you here today, showing us around the exhibition centre here in Ballarat, and again, to your car club, to, for all these cars to turn up, mate, well done. Thanks, Fletch. Appreciate you coming down. It's been fantastic to have you here, and uh, we hope the viewers enjoy the show as much as we've enjoyed putting it on. Good evening, mate. My pleasure. Thank you. Thanks, Fletch. Well, there you go. There's just some of motoring through the decades, and I'm sure you'll agree it certainly was a unique episode of Classic Restos. Now, until next week, no matter where you're watching Classic Restos from, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch, and I thank you very much for watching. You can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash classic restos TV and watch catch up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's Insurance, Penrite Oil, Hair and Forbes Machinery House, and Pace Farm Eggs.